ਮਾਰੇ ਨੇ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਬੈਕ ਟੂ ਯਰ ਆਰਾ Welcome back. Let's recap on the words from week 8. Cabra meaning head. Polaba meaning shoulders. Ambura meaning knees. Inga meaning foot or toes. Okay, week 8's worksheet. You need to be able to find the correct arunda word for the correct body parts for example cabra meaning head on the next page you need to fill in the body parts with your own language so again ask someone in your family or the community if you don't know it yourself so have a go at doing week 8 worksheet stay safe and we'll see you next time bye bye Hey Shailen here from the Contact Academy. Welcome to another segment of Show Us Your Colors. So I've got a few jumpers that I want to show that mean a lot to me. Um, first of all is my basketball singlet. It's a family team that I played for in New Zealand just over the break in Christmas. So they have this big tournament in um, New Zealand that's called the Maldives Basketball Tournament. So basically what happens is um each team is from your iwi in other words tribe so you have teams from your own tribe and you versus other tribes in a big national basketball tournament um we were able to make it to the finals and we uh managed oh uh, we managed to make it to the finals but lost we um this means a lot because I was able to play with just family. Every other team had imports or people that uh played professionally, but our team was just made up of all my first cousins and brother-in-laws. So that was uh something special to me. And my other one is my rugby league jumper. It's not a jumper, but it's our training top. Um the Vikings here in Alice Springs. Uh this means a lot to me because we uh won eight championships in a row um but not only that it's just the team environment that we had you know everyone was um you know it seemed like a family to me everyone was there for each other each day each training each game everyone turned up for each other and you could just feel the brotherhood for playing for this team and um yeah I'm sure you've seen some of these ingredients when your parents have been cooking or even here at school with Miss Fleur doing her cooking. So we have heat some self-raising flour. I can tell it's self-raising flour because it keeps lifting up on its own. I'm going to keep my hand on it. So this says on here 2 kilos. Are we got 2 kilos in there Mr. Dan? No, we've got 1.973. 1.973 so if we're going to round that this 3 would take us down so it'd be 1.97 kilos yes. so it's actually 3 grams short in this bag so we'll put that one over there for the time being now this one miss dad is we've got caster sugar and now you know we mums get caster sugar she's going to be baking a cake eh it's about time um miss andrea baked another cake Here we go. Put it on the scales. 
1.29, so we've actually gained. So it's actually heavier, and quite a bit heavier. So that is now 30 grams over. Oh, I'm not gonna tell them about that. We keep that one. Maybe I should take these scales when we go shopping. Now, this is a used bag of self-raising flour. See, it keeps going up. Here we go, how much is this gonna weigh, Mr. Dan? 0 0.351. 0 0.35 grams, so there's not too much left of this. So that's 350 grams, 0.35 of a kilo. That's 350 grams. Remember with Miss Sandra? Miss Sandra said there's 1,000 grams in every kilo. And that's on there. This week in our Marcus and his mates episode, Marcus is learning about weight. Well, we are now finding Marcus has learned a lot of new things from his Uncle Dan. He has learned about time, money, change, and now he is visiting the Maniri store in Ali Karang. It's a beautiful day over in Ali Karang, and as the day goes by, there is a large truck that approaches the Maniri store and needs to unload. Uncle Dan is in his office doing some paperwork when his phone starts to ring. He answers his phone and he realizes that there is a shipment that has arrived and he needs to unload the truck. Uncle Dan has in mind the perfect person who can help him do this job. And that takes us to Marcus. Now, Marcus was resting in the couch in the staff room, minding his own business, when out of nowhere Uncle Dan shows up, giving Marcus a bit of a fright. He hands Mr. Marcus a piece of paper and says that he is going to help him unload. Marcus grabs the paper which has the list of items he needs to unpack. Marcus got very excited because he enjoyed trucks. Uncle Dan took Marcus to the front of the shop where he showed the large loading truck in front of the Maniri store. Uncle Dan then took Marcus to the back loading dock where Marcus needed to unload all the boxes in the truck. As Uncle Dan began to explain how much weight the table could hold, Marcus was not listening. He was too excited about seeing such a big trucking community. Uncle Dan said that the table could only hold six boxes. When Marcus looked at the back of the truck, he saw many boxes stacked there with food for the Maniri shop. Uncle Dan continued to explain to Marcus how he needed to unpack the truck. Then Marcus got to work. He took one box at a time and began stacking it on the table neatly. He did this back and forth, adding a second box to the table. And then he added a third. Marcus continued to do this quickly, but he had forgotten how many boxes his uncle actually said could fit on the table. He didn't think it would mean too much of an issue for him, so he kept stacking and packing. However, when Marcus added extra boxes to the table, the table began to shake and become very unsturdy, and it collapsed, putting all the boxes on the floor with a loud crashing noise. Now, Uncle Dan heard that noise and came outside. Uncle Dan then explained to Marcus that he had put too many boxes on that table and it was too heavy, but he was happy to help him fix it. Uncle Dan and Marcus stacked all the boxes neatly on the table and Marcus was happy about what he had learned. The things to do at home while you're waiting, remember the app wait, W-A-I-T, to come back to your aura. Can you weigh things, W-E-I-G-H? Can you weigh things and see the difference? See which is lighter and which is heavier. Just send us some photographs or send us some answers um, on Facebook page. But here's a little question for you to end with. And we're gonna have a little prize on this one. Which is heavier, a ton of footballs or a ton of soccer boots? So here's a question to end with. Send us in the answers via Facebook or let us know when you come back to school. Let me know. See you next time. Hello and welcome to another exciting Bible story. A story about languages. In God's story, people trust and listen to him for a while, and then they
they become proud and start doing their own thing? Let's read the story, The Tower of Babel, from Genesis 11. God's people were living in one place and everyone spoke the same language. We are great. We're a mighty nation, they said. Let's build an awesome tower that reaches up to heaven. Then we'll be famous all over the world. The people made bricks, drying them until they were hard and strong. They started to build the tower. Up and up it went. Everyone worked together, helping to build the tower. Up, up, up. Day after day, they worked together. The people looked at the tower. They were proud of their tower. What a tower! Up, 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 up. God looked at the tower. God looked at the people. The people were showing off. They were proud of the tower. We are great, they said. The people forgot that God is great. God worked a miracle. Suddenly, God gave them new words to speak in different languages. The workers couldn't understand what the others were saying. Jibber-jabber, jibber-jabber. They began to make mistakes. Jibber-jabber, jabber-jibber said the people. They could not work together. They got annoyed and angry with each other. The people did not say, we are great. Groups of families who spoke the same language left Babel together to find their own places to live. And so different languages and ways of living spread all over the world. What language do you speak? We asked some of the staff to say a few words in their first language. Hello, my name is Kerr Abbott. Just want to say it's called Jira Gol Antar Labnum. Jira is Nyendu. Nyendu Kernem. Yeah. Pagwan Le Timbro Rachagoron. Piet Mikot. Tarim Labimop. Do you sell your seeing in your bohut? Die Heere sal sy aangezicht oor jou laat skyn en jou genadig wees. Amen. Ek wil enke dan pak die hond. Engaard Isola en Dandrum Jingena. Thanks for watching. Remember that God gave you your language. Learn it from your family and be proud of it. Until next time, may God be with you. Comfort, comfort all my people with the comfort of my word. Speak it tender to my people, all your sins are taken Hi everyone, lately we've been looking at persuasive writing, which is when you try and persuade someone on your point of view. Let's take a look at some of our staff and see what they try to persuade each other on. Hi, my name is Brody and I'm on Team DC. I believe that DC is better than Marvel because the animated series when I was a kid was a very popular show in my household. Secondly, I find that the villains in DC are much more interesting and more creative than the ones you find in Marvel. And lastly, I find the storylines are more interesting and more realistic than what you find in Marvel movies and capture my attention a lot more than what a Marvel movie is able to do. That's why I believe that DC is a lot better than Marvel. Firstly, I think Marvel was better than DC. DC started as a Marvel comic before Marvel did, but 
Marvel actually started as a comic book, superhero comic book. When DC started, there were only detective comics. So Marvel actually has always only ever done superhero comics. And they started back in 1939. So that's a lot, 80-something years of just doing superhero comics. The Marvel Cinematic Universe, they've made 23 movies in the last 10 years. They've all been box office hits. Most of them have gone to a billion dollars of gross profit. So I don't know about you, but I think Marvel is better. The superheroes are fantastic. Captain America, Thor. I mean, what is this Superman? Who, yeah, Superman, Batman, but nothing on, nothing on Captain America or Thor. So. Thanks. My drop. Hi, my name is Rebecca, and I appreciate both Marvel and DC. Firstly, I think that both Marvel and DC are very entertaining, both on screen and in the comics, and have been very valuable to us through the years. Secondly, they're both very creative. Marvel is focused on a more historical aspect with its storyline, whereas DC is a lot more fictitious and creative. Both things that I enjoy about them. Lastly, I believe that anybody that appreciates comics, whether Marvel or DC, are unique and should be praised because not many people like those kind of things nowadays. That's why I'm convinced that both the Marvel and the DC franchise are very beneficial and very entertaining to people of all different ages. Hi, my name is Paul and I am Team Dogs. Now, dogs are amazing. They are loyal and trustworthy. You can train them to be really helpful or to look after you or your family. And the great thing about dogs is they are always happy to see you. So I am definitely pro dogs. That is the reasons why I love dogs so much. Hi, my name's Sandra and I'm team dog, as you all know. Firstly, I think dogs are better than cats because dogs love you unconditionally. Secondly, did you know dog is God spelt backwards? Because it's the closest thing you're gonna to get to God on this earth. Lastly, cats only want you when they want something. Dogs love you all the time. That's why I'm convinced that dogs are better than cats. That's why I'm sure that dogs are better than cats. And for all those reasons, I believe dogs are way better than cats. Well, actually Sandra, I think cats are better than dogs. I've thought about this two ways. Firstly, physically, cats are stronger. Now a lot of you might be laughing out there because you're looking out the backyard and you see the dog chasing the cat, but I'm thinking about the big picture. I'll back the biggest cat against the biggest dog at any time. I think Mr. Lion has got Mr. Wolf covered. But the main reason I'm convinced that cats are better than dogs is the AFL Premiership. The cats have won nine and the dogs have only won two. Go cats. Hi, my name is Bomber and I'm team neutral because I love both cats and dogs. I love cats because I love how independent they are, yet they can also show loyalty. And I love dogs because they love you all the time and you can take them for walks and drives. And despite the common knowledge, cats are also very fierce on their territory, just like dogs. So I love them both. Hey, Mr. J, what's going on? Uh, nothing much at the moment. Man, I love traveling. Where are we going next? I tell you what, I've been thinking about going to Elliot. Man, I love Elliot. It's one of my favorite places. Straight up the track. There's lots happening there. What do you reckon? Should we hit the road? Let's go! Before we leave, Mr. J, are your bags packed? Right here. Comics, sandwiches, drinks, ready to go. All right, everyone, let's get on board and make sure you put your seatbelts on. Hi, everyone, Miss Tiffany here. I'll be your tour guide for today. Let's learn something new about Elliot. 
Elliot Community is 761 kilometers north of Alice Springs on the Stewart Highway. The languages they speak are Mutbara and Jinglu. The new health clinic has doctors, nurses, Aboriginal health workers and a visiting dentist that comes once a week. The sport and rec centre is behind the main park. Here you can watch movies, play pool table. Every Friday night you can go to the disco, but it is only for the students who attend school. If you wanted to keep fit, you can use the gym at the sports and rec centre. Every night there is a basketball competition. The Longridge Waterhole is about 15 kilometers from Elliot. It is a good place to hunt for bush tucker like witchetty grubs, water mussels, yabbies and fish. We also like to go swimming. Hey everyone, it's Dan from the Clontarf Academy at Urara. I get to be the special guest this week. Community studies are looking at Elliot, a town that I really love. Uh, and got a strong connection with. Hello to all the Jingly Mudborough crew up there in Elliot, one side town, and I uh, hope you enjoy the episode and keep safe. Looking forward to seeing everybody soon. I used to live up in Tennant Creek. There was a really strong connection between Tennant and Elliot, especially some families there. Playing football up that way, we used to play the Elliot Hawks three or four times a year. It, it was always a tough game against Elliot. I always knew I was going to be sweaty and sore by the end of the game. They had some of the best footy players going around. One bloke in particular, Donovan Raymond. I think he's won six league medals up there and just a jet footballer, but a really humble, nice bloke too. To come to Urara now and to be able to connect with Elliot's next generation of leaders has been unreal and it's just a really great core group of fellas and it says a lot about the community and their high expectations for their young people. Jake Need used to play football for Port Power. He is a good role model for the Elliot kids. Uh, my name is Paul Imms and I'm the media officer at Urara College. In the early 2000s I started as a house parent. I do remember Jake Need. He's very athletic and very uh, excited to take part in football and being part of the team. What does it mean for you to be able to come home? Well, for me to come home, catch up with friends and family, big, big proud moment for me uh, for what I've achieved. And, yeah, I'd just like to thank Port Adelaide Football Club for coming and seeing my community and also mingle up with, this, with the uh, primary uh, school, seeing the environment that I live in and growing up. What do you think when you think back on your time here and now that you're down in Adelaide and you know, playing AFL games? Oh, you know, it was definitely worth it, like to move to Alice first and move to Ballarat. I was not too sure what, what would happen, but all I knew is that I'd, I've got to finish my school off first, so that's what I've concentrated on and actually help playing good footy too. I'm very proud of uh, coming back at home, you know, um, show, be a good role model too. Just showing them, you know, how far you can go if you put the foot down and accelerate and go for it. Like, just taking your options, I guess. You said to some students that talent only gets you so far, it takes more than talent. Yeah, like I said, you know, I, I had talent in me, but for be, to be a successful AFL footballer, I had to change my attitude and make sure I'm always there training and make sure that I'm on top of everything. In 2013, this jersey was worn by Port Adelaide Football Club. The emu emblem used was designed by the Kulamindi Arts Centre in Need's hometown of Elliot. Jake Need told the ancient story of three emus. All three emus were brothers who ventured from the top end on separate paths. One of the emus came to Elliot and this is how the emu became the totem of his family home. The emu spirit from Elliot represents family and a connection to the land. Back in 2016, we went to Elliot. We met the parents of some of our students there and played games of basketball against the Elliot kids. Elliot, great team sports, basketball, footy. What have you got at your place? Send through a picture and a fact of your team. I know Elliot have the Elliot Hawks. What team does your community have? Hey, Mr. James, what's going on? Nothing much, Jamie. Um. <laughs> Do that again. Super. Twenty more takes, we'll get it. <laughs> <laughs>
One more will get it and take 50. Man Dutch, welcome back to another episode of Health with Mr. Zane and Mr. Liko. We are very excited to bring you the next part of our unit, which will be your assessment for this topic. Yes, Mr. Liko. In today's lesson, we will introduce to you an overview of the assessments that you will need to complete to show your understanding of the topic for this term. As you know, we have focused on two main parts of our overall topic for this term. The first part is choices. The second part is well-being. When we put these two ideas together, we understand how your choices can affect your personal well-being in both a good and a bad way. That's right. We have two assessments ready for you to complete. This will show us your understanding of choices and how they can improve your social, physical, emotional, and mental well-being. Let's go take a look at all your different assessment options. Come with me. The first part of your well-being assessment is a brainstorm. Your task is to complete a brainstorm that describes and explains each of the four parts of your well-being. This is a good way to show your basic understanding of what well-being means and what you have learned throughout the term about the Urara College well-being model. In the second part of your well-being assessment, you will have a set of options for you to choose from. You can only pick one option that you want to use for your assessment. Here are your options. Option number one, have an interview with someone talking about how your choices can affect your well-being in both a good and a bad way. This can be with anyone from your family, your friends, your local school, or anyone else in your community. As long as you choose someone you find easy to talk to, that is totally fine. Your second and final option is a short scenario showing off your acting skills. This is a chance for you to show your understanding of choices and how they can impact on your well-being in a short scenario showing a choice you would make either at school or back home in your communities. You can either do this by yourself or with other people, whatever makes you happy and comfortable. Next time, we will focus on the first part of your assessment, which is our brainstorm assessment. We will break it down for you step by step together with examples to help get you started. We look forward to seeing your amazing work. Bye. Went too early on the second box. Dying your whistle. <laughs> Welcome back to Urara. <laughs>